Hello YouTubers. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate how to disassemble and inexpensively repair the Shop Fox Parrot Vise or other similar VersaVise copies. Several years ago I purchased a Shop Fox Parrot Vise for my gunsmithing work as well as for general purpose household use. The Shop Fox Vise is essentially a copy of the well-regarded VersaVise. The original VersaVise has been copied by many manufacturers under various names. Recently my handy, versatile, and often used vise failed me. The barrel nut stripped its threads. As I later discovered after some investigation, this is a common problem with this design of vise. A new replacement nut is available from Wilbert Company online for $40.90 which works out to be $24.95 for the nut plus a hefty $15.95 for shipping. Considering that a new Shop Fox Parrot Vise can be had for $50 to $60, I didn't consider it as a viable option. Additionally, the Wilbert Company didn't reply to my inquiries about the size and thread pitch of the replacement nut they sell. I will attach a link to the Wilbert Company website below, but if you decide to buy the replacement nut, you will risk it not fitting your particular vise. In order to diagnose the problem with my vise, I first had to disassemble it. I was able to find very little data on how to go about doing that, and the process was not at all obvious. To the best of my knowledge, no videos have been made on this topic, and there is precious little information available on the internet. The best uh, disassembly information I found was on the Garage Journal blog. I will also attach a link to that website. As it turns out, the vise screw on this vise is held in place in the casting by a bushing on the handle assembly. An E-clip then holds the bushing in place on the screw. The bushing is a press fit into the vise casting and allows it to spin freely. The screw and bushing are easily removed once you know how it's assembled. I used a slide hammer to disassemble mine. Alternatively, you could try backing out the screw with wedges. The bushing is right in here. Once the screw was removed, I was able to verify that the barrel nut was indeed stripped. I briefly contemplated making a replacement barrel nut from 1 inch cold rolled steel, but I didn't have the correct tap for the 5 8 inch by 8 Acme threads. So, to get to the point, the subject of this video is my solution to the repair of this vise without having to spend a lot of money purchasing a new barrel nut or having to make one yourself. Had Wilbert Company replied to my email, and had their product been the correct size and pitch, I would still have been reluctant to purchase one due to the cost. With a little metalworking experience, you can accomplish my method of repair for under $5. The only tools you will need are another vise, a drill press or hand drill, various drill bits of the correct size, a milling machine or hand files and some elbow grease, one or two cotter pins, and finally an easily obtained off-the-shelf Acme nut. I will outline the steps that I use to repair my vise. First, go to your local Fastenal or other hardware supplier and purchase at least one, if not several, quote, heavy Acme nuts, 5 eighths by 8 teeth per inch, end quote, the Fastenal part number is 1137991. They do have an internet uh, website where you can order these as well. Each one of these nuts costs me $4.50 including tax. As you can see, these nuts have been milled. on both sides and top and bottom. In order to demonstrate, I have taken this larger nut and outlined 
the areas where I removed metal. This is the orientation of the nut as it sits inside the vise once reassembled. You have to remove some metal from both sides and the top and bottom. This is easily accomplished with a milling machine but it can also be done rather quickly with a hand file. The nuts aren't that large and it's soft metal. I would recommend that you purchase several extra nuts as I did because this apparently is a weak point in this vise and it will strip out again undoubtedly. It's easy to see that the barrel nut is stripped. Disassembly of the vise is as follows. Mount the arm of the forward jaw in your vise and if you have one attach a slide hammer. Give it a few whacks and you see the bushing coming out right there. As you can also see, the replacement nut is already visible here from my prior repair. One more thing to interject here. I found that uh, with a soft mallet, I was able to tap the bushing out like so. So for those of you who don't have a slide hammer, that's an option with caution. Here's the bushing and the E-ring that holds it in place. Again, this is a slip fit into the front of the casting here. The barrel nut is then removed simply by tapping it through the casting. As you can see here, I have already drilled mine out in order to allow a slip fit of the original screw. The way my repair works is that this purchased Acme nut simply goes behind the barrel nut and allows you to loosen and tighten the vise appropriately. The flats keep the nut from rotating inside the vise. Depending on the condition of your casting you may want to file some of the roughness out of this area in order to allow the nut to move in and out more smoothly. Once you have removed your barrel nut, drill the barrel nut hole out, completely removing the strip threads and giving clearance for your vise screw. The next step is optional but desirable. I recommend that you file or mill a flat in this region in order to accommodate the the replacement nut. It'll keep the nut uh, more stable against the uh, barrel nut and it'll allow you to have a few more turns opening the vise. So I am now off to the milling machine to mill a flat in this region and I'll show it to you when I get done. At this point in time if you have a mill it would be a good time to cut the upper and lower flats and the left and right flats. If not put it in the vise and go at it with a file. The file would also work for making the flat here. Well I'm back from the mill and this is the flat that I 
milled on the barrel nut. Uh, it doesn't have to be this wide and it certainly doesn't have to be that deep. It just has to accommodate the nut. So it just has to be as wide as the nut. And these dimensions are not critical. Neither are the dimensions of the flats you file or mill on the nut. They don't have to be all that uh, snug fitting. It can be a little bit loose and still work well. You just don't want it to bind up. So perhaps loose is a little bit better than too tight. The next step is reassembly of the vise, which is simple. By the way, don't forget a little lube on your threads. That's always important. Might even help to prolong the life of that new nut a little bit. So, simply insert your vise screw into the casting and the barrel nut oriented with the flat towards the back and then grab your brand new nut and put it in place like so and start advancing it make it uh, fit into the casting in the rear Now here you want to be careful that you get the bushing lined up with the casting hole or the hole in the casting and then it's a simple matter to tighten it up. It should fit right in very easily. If, uh, if it doesn't go in easily you might want to stop and check to make sure there's no issues. Uh, maybe there's a burr on the corner or some paint or something. So here we go. The nuts brought all the way in and the bushing is in contact with the casting so just tighten it up and there it goes. It's seating perfectly. Okay, it's all the way in. Now, so you'll notice the, the vise works fine for closing but when you open it it doesn't open. The vise, the front vise jaw doesn't move and you can see the nut backing out right here. So on to the next step. So in order to prevent the nut from backing out like that and not allowing you to open the vise My solution was to use two cotter pins. Um, I'm going to try the small ones first. If they don't work, I'll use the larger ones. But I'm going to use the cotter pins to capture the nut from behind, both at the top and at the bottom, above and below the screw. It appears that my nut has about 550 thousandths clearance uh, before it reaches the edge of the casting. So I figure if I go in about half an inch from the edge of the casting, I should be okay to drill holes uh, approximately here and here above and below the screw. So I'm off to the milling machine again to do that, and I'll be back when I'm done. Okay, guys. I drilled the two holes for the cotter pins. And I checked the fit. Uh, there's enough clearance for the nut to ride just ahead of this pin and be captured against the barrel nut so it won't move forward or backwards so it's time to reassemble so let's do that on camera and we'll be all finished
Again, orient the flat towards the back. Insert your nut so that it has the broad flats sideways and the narrow flats up and down, at least on my vise, it may be different for yours. And start tightening it up. Still on camera. By the way, this is my first YouTube video. So hopefully you'll cut me a little slack. Move the camera a little bit. And again, uh, be careful when you're reassembling that you line up the bushing with the hole in the casting and that your nut is inside the vise casting. And draw it up tight. Good. Now the nut is don't know if you can see it but it's in there up against the back of the old barrel nut now we'll put a couple of pins in and Unfortunately, one pin is slightly longer than the other, so it is uh, important to get the right one in the right place. There we go. Yeah, let me get a... pair of pliers and we'll bend the tip of that. Okay. All right. Now you can see the cotter pins. Hopefully you can see the cotter pins in there holding the nut and when you open the vise the jaw opens because the nut's captured and when you close it it closes tight all right guys so there you have it buy a couple of extra nuts save them for when it breaks because it will break again and that's it I hope this video has been helpful and I hope it saved a couple of verse of eyes from the scrap heap God bless you and God bless the Constitutional Republic of the United States of America I gave a girl in my wagon She climbed in And took control She was tired Cause her mind was a dragon And I said get some sleep And dream of rock and roll